another corporate figure has been targeted by the eco-activist group The East. Hello and welcome to What the Flick. I'm Christy, this is Alonzo, this is Ben, and after this episode we're gonna go and band together and form our own little anarchist group mm. to take on the corporate evildoers. Why not? Inspired by The East. And Alonzo, I gotta tell you what The East is about. So the East stars uh, indie darling Brit Marling. I love saying that. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the star of The Sound of My Voice. Uh, and uh, she also played Richard Gere's daughter in uh, Arbitrage. Anyway, she's an ex-FBI agent and she goes to work for a company that infiltrates um, uh, anti-corporate protest groups uh, on behalf of the corporations themselves. And so she gets involved with these anarchists called the East who have been, uh, we see them at the beginning of the film, uh, dumping oil in the house of a petroleum executive who covered up an oil spill. Um, and uh, the further that she gets into the group, the more she begins to question the morality of what she's doing and wondering if maybe she's on the wrong side. Take a look. We need someone to get inside the East. Who would you choose? Me. I'm unexpected. Being unexpected is the only advantage that matters. So what's kind of fascinating here with Britt Marling is that she, in The Sound of My Voice, was the cult leader, right. was this mysterious kind of beguiling, mysterious, um, potentially fraudulent figure who might have been from outer space or not. And she led them and, and drew them in and sucked from them From the in. future. From the future. She may or may not be from the future. <laughs> is she an alien? No, she's just time traveler. Time traveler. Yes. Time traveler. Same thing. So, um, and now she's the one getting sucked into the cult. And right. I think there's, there's something kind of very naturalistic and still and subtle about her that allows you to believe her in every single situation. And I'm a big fan of hers, and I know that you are not quite so convinced. I'm, you know, I, I kind of run a little hot and cold with her. I'm curious to see where she goes next. I think mm -hmm. there's potential there for sure. Yeah, um, this is this is great for a while. This is um, very suspenseful and keeps you guessing for a while. I like the way that it explores her vacillating allegiances and mm -hmm. and you know. It's easy to see how she would get sucked into this group. Alexander Skarsgård is a very charismatic leader, and um, they do these very persuasive kind of creepy and sexualized and intimate rituals to, right. to bring somebody in. And um, it's great for a while, and then the third act turns very predictable and oh. kind of melodramatic as just a pat action thriller. The, this movie frustrates me so much yeah. because it gives us this really interesting character and they make her conflicted and they give her genuine sort of moral ambiguity to be conflicted about, you know, and, and it, it demands that she make tough choices. It demands that we examine our own beliefs about what, you know, what, what we support and, and, and how, what, what tactics we support towards the things that we believe in, and then completely craps out. Completely tosses all that out the window, right? Because for a while it's like, well, the corporations, Maybe they didn't mean to do it, and for a while I was like, well, the anarchists, they're not so great either because they're yeah. doing the same thing that they're accusing these other people of. And, exactly. And, it's and like, then it's like, here's the answer. It, it, Here it is. Right. It's like the whole notion of, you know, uh, one man's, you know, terrorist is another man's freedom fighter mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, and it gets, it gets a little bit into those weeds of making you sort of wonder, well, what justifies this and when do I question that? And then, yeah, completely walks away from it and just goes Disney Channel. It, <laughs> I, I, it's oh, so, so, why is it so Channel? Why, why Disney well, Channel? Just because it's just so easy. It's so it's pat. Simple. And yeah, like, yeah, 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 very simplistic, and everybody can leave the theater going, "Shoo!" Don't need to think about that anymore. Yeah, the you know? ending is very happy. <clears throat> I will say that after going some very, very dark places yeah. and some unexpectedly dark and Absolutely, violent places. Yeah. I mean, there are turns here I didn't see coming. No, no, definitely, yeah. and and some some chilling, chilling behavior on both sides. So on both the, the corporate side and the anarchist side. How do you get to be, a, by the way, an ex, ex FBI agent at like? 27 that she appears to be. She's, <laughs> she's brilliant. Well, it's kind of like Jessica Chastain's character in uh, Zero Dark Thirty, right? She's like young and brilliant. She's the Doogie Hauser of the FBI. Yes. Right. Um, <laughs> one, one thing too about her though, we, we kind of intentionally don't know a lot about her background because she's meant to be a blank. mysterious and able to, to go undercover. But one thing that they introduce early and often, and they also abandon, is her Christianity. Oh yeah, that I know. I kept thinking that was going to come up again later, and then right. Boop. Here's what I wonder: because she wears a cross around her neck in the beginning, and she she's listens, listens to, to Christian, Christian radio, radio on the way yeah. into work, and then at some point she trades out the cross for a paper clip around her neck, which she's able to use to like, you know, get herself out of handcuffs or right. whatever. Was the cross? actually ever really a cross was it always meant to be part of a facade to, to, oh. suge to suggest who her, she her, is. Her previous fake identity maybe? Or? Uh, maybe yeah, that, well, or, or, we, or just I mean, who she was the world. Why, well, then would you, 
you're, you're overselling it by listening to it, Christian Radio she's in the car. She's by herself, by herself listening right. to Christian Radio. Unless you, unless you want to know to you're staying in, in Starbucks. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. anyway, she, she prays at one point, at the beginning of her mission, she prays at the end, and so I, I, I suspect that this is an idea that they toyed with and kind of like didn't really, walked away. Yeah. And, I, and I like that. I like that they don't present like a young Christian single woman as somebody who is Bible thumping or is um, proselytizing or, or whatever, like is part of her, her strength and then they sort of bail on it. I was kind of curious. Yeah, about it, that. It, it, <laughs> it, it didn't feel subtle enough that it was just part of the character. It felt, because of the whole radio scene, I thought, okay, this this is you know this is the gun in Act One. It's going to go <laughs> off in Act Three, but no, it just it, it, we don't really care. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I liked her a lot. I I really liked uh, Patricia Clarkson oh, yes, as really her great. boss. Uh, she's I, chilling. Speaking of chilling, she's she yeah. She there are some moments of her that are like, yeah. Um, you know, Ellen Page was kind of. I don't know, a little overdoing it as, as the kind of young punk anarchist. There, there's actually, it's interesting, the, the whole cult aspect of this movie because at Cinefamily in LA right now, they're doing this whole like two week series of movies about cults. Mm -hmm. Like I just saw Ticket to Heaven, which is about the Moonies and The Source Family, which is a documentary about this, you know, LA kind of cult oh, that happened. Cool. So uh, you're right. I mean, they do, they do nail a lot of the whole indoctrination, love bombing kind of stuff pretty interestingly. But 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 for a group that's obviously more like Occupy Wall Street than mm -hmm. like the Moonies, you know. But again, uh, the movie fritters away all of these great ideas and all of these challenging moral questions with this un undeservedly and ridiculously just pat ending. It was depressing. Switch your numbers. Where'd I give it? I give it like a six point seven because I liked it, it for a long time. I, yeah, I give it a six. It would have been much higher had the last ten minutes not blown it so badly. Mm -hmm. It's at seventy four percent on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. It's tomato meter rating, and uh, so we're at. Uh, you guys are at six point four.